All right, guys. Now, so now I want to talk to you about the, the the rings. There's a couple of different kinds of rings that you may have. There's just the standard gapped rings, and then the rings that came with our engine here are what we call file to fit ring. The end gap of the ring is important. We got to talk about this because when the ring is in the bore, it compresses the ring, and the gap is is almost closed. The width of that gap is important because. We have to have of enough of a gap that when the piston gets hot and the rings get hot and everything expands, that the gap doesn't close up and the ends of the rings smash into each other. What happens if the ends of the rings, if the gap is too tight and the end of the rings smash into each other when the engine warms up, it puts stress on the ring, it can break the ring, and it actually doesn't oil properly. And usually what will happen is when the ring end gap touch each other and the engine's running, it usually puts so much pressure on that ring land that it blows a big chunk of aluminum out of the side of the piston. In other words, it basically catastrophic failure for your motor. I can't stress enough how important that ring end gap is. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to talk about especially with file fit rings. We have a tool, there's a couple of different kinds of ring files. One of the things that I would not encourage you to do, take just a regular file and start filing on these rings. The thing about the rings is this, and I kind of drew up a little illustration here. What you want when your rings are filed is, you see this top one here, what you want is you want the ends of the rings completely square when they're butted up to each other. If you use a hand file, sometimes you go to butt the ring up and you'll have a big gap on one side and it'll be tight over here. This is not a good thing to have happening. This causes issues with blow-by and so forth. And you could also do it the other way. So you could have one of them straight, one of them's off. So we really need to use a, a ring file that's designed to keep the edges of that ring square. That's really important. The other thing is, if you look down here on this one, what you're gonna do when you file the rings is as you file these rings on the ring filer, it creates a burr here. It creates a burr. You do wanna get those burrs off of there, but you don't want a big bevel or chamfer on here because that causes your gap to be larger. It actually creates a situation where you may have blow by. You don't want to deburr the ring and have a big chamfer on the edge of the ring, either bottom, down here, or up here. We, we don't want to come in here and make a big bevel or chamfer. What you want to do is after you file them and you get the correct gap, and you're gonna check the gap with a feeler gauge. After you file them, there's gonna be burrs on here. So what you wanna do is take a really fine file, and you just wanna very lightly break that edge, and you wanna feel it with your finger. You can feel if there's a burr there. You don't wanna take any more material off of here than you absolutely have to just to get rid of that burr, because remember, ultimately, we don't want a big chamfer here. We want these ends to be square when they're in the bore and of course we have to have the right gap and I'll show you that. So you just want to go in and very lightly, when you file fit rings, you can't get in a hurry, right? Because if I take too much material off this ring, I can't add any back to it. So what we do is we file, we put the ring in and we take a measurement and I'll show you that here in a minute. This ring has not yet been filed. Now I've filed all the other rings for this engine and trust me, it took like two and a half hours. They do have electric ring filing machines that you can pay four or five hundred bucks for that do it much faster. I just use the hand crank type filer. Take my time. I set aside time and I say, okay, I'm filing the rings. This, you, you cannot get in a hurry. You gotta make sure that the ends are square. You gotta make sure everything is deburred. You establish that you have the right end gap after you filed it. Just go in and break each edge and you can feel that with your fingernail. If you run your finger across all four corners, if there's a burr here, you gotta get rid of that because that burr can cause problems. So we're very lightly going to get the burr off, take just enough or do just enough filing very lightly to get rid of that burr and that's it. Stop there because you want those edges as square as possible. When they're butted up, you don't want to have any kind of angle or bevel or a big chamfer, you just want them square. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's take this over to the filer and again when, when you're filing rings, you don't want to do it near your block or your clean parts. You need to take the ring, walk over to another part of the shop where you're not, because the filer has a grinding stone on it and it can get grit. You don't want it anywhere near these parts. So I'm going to move the camera and we'll shift gears over to where the ring filer is and I'll show you how we do that. So this is our ring file. Now it's, it's important that, like I said, you, do, you use something that's going to get that ring square. Now I've already filed these, so I don't want to file on it anymore. 
But what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this ring up just like this. And it's got these two pins on it here. And the nice thing about it is, is I can hold this ring against the pins and then square up against this wheel and then I, could, I go ahead and I file it. Once you file it, you're gonna have a burr on there. So we wanna come in with a very fine file and you wanna just knock the edges off of that burr. Now this has already been deburred and done but we're just gonna knock the edges off of each corner and you can feel that. If you feel a burr there, you wanna come in and you wanna file that burr off there and make sure it doesn't, doesn't cause any issues. But you don't wanna to take too much off. You just wanna go very lightly enough to get rid of the burr, put it back in there and you check your end gap and once you get the desired end gap, your ring is filed and ready to go on the piston. And again, keep this respective ring with the respective cylinder. In other words, whatever cylinder this is going in, keep it with that cylinder and that piston.